Hello friends, and today's uh, talk on immunization will be about uh, H influenza vaccination. Okay, so coming to the introduction and to know why there is a need for H influenza vaccination. So the causative organism first of all is H influenza as we all know and it is the type B. Okay, and it is a capsulated organism. There are uncapsulated organisms which causes sinusitis, otitis media, pneumonia, etc. And that occurs in all the age group and the vaccination that we are talking about will not provide immunity against the uncapsulated one. Okay. So we are going to read about the capsulated strain. Okay. Capsulated hemophilus, hemophilus influenza B. And what is the need for vaccination is that it is a very invasive pathogen so it can cause all the very serious invasive infections such as meningitis septicemia pneumonia cellulitis osteomyelitis septic arthritis epiglottitis okay and there is good uh, there is a high amount of mortality as well 11% associated with other infections and when it comes to meningitis it is around 20% and even if the they survive this meningitis they are left with severe neurological sequelae like hearing loss okay and all the way more important is most of this invasive disease occurs in first two years of life first two years of life so that is the need to vaccinate a child early in the life especially in the first two years of life okay so let's read about the vaccination now till now we understood what is the need for vaccination now let's read about vaccination so what is the type of vaccine it is a polysaccharide vaccine capsular polysaccharide vaccine okay so the polyribosyl phosphate part is used okay now again if we inject capsular polysaccharide as it is we know one of the disadvantage one of the side effect is that it cannot be injected in less than two years correct it cannot be injected in less than two years but we also know that most of this invasive disease occurs in the first two years of life correct so we ought to now what do we have to do we also know that when we combine a capsular polysaccharide vaccine with a protein if we conjugate it with a protein then it can be administered in less than two years as well our body is capable of mounting an immune response so what they did is two types of vaccine are available you can either combine it with crm197 mutant coronibacterium diphtheria toxin protein which is called as hboc and outer membrane protein complex of neisseria meningitis okay this is called as prm PRP polyribosyl phosphate outer membrane protein okay so these are the two vaccines that are available in India PRP combined with coronibacterium diphtheria protein or the Neisseria meningitis outer membrane protein okay coming to the storage it has to be stored within 2 to 8 degrees celsius okay and how is it available it is either available as monovalent vaccine or it is available as polyvalent co vaccine in combination with other vaccines and multiple such combinations are available in the market and the most prevalent one that is used under our national immunization schedule is the DTP whole cell petrosis diphtheria tetanus oxide along with hepatitis B along with H influenza B okay now coming to the dosage what is the dosage it is 0.5 ml administered intramuscular in infants it is the antilateral aspect of the thigh when it comes to higher age group it is the deltoid that is the preferred site for intramuscular as we have already read before okay now coming to the schedule okay so what is the logic behind this three dose schedule is when we give first dose of this vaccine it produces only a marginal increase in the immunity okay only a marginal antibody response so this is not enough to protect us correct that is why a second dose and a third dose is needed when you give second dose some amount of immune response is produced but only after giving third round third dose body mounts a very good immune response okay that is why the need for three doses okay and then what we see is okay fine it provides a good immunity but this immunity as well wanes off over time okay and the immunological memory that is present is not sufficient to protect against the disease 
and there is lack of natural boosting as well because most of the children will be immunized so when most of the children are immunized there there is no other way to get an infection naturally correct so there is lack of natural boosting as well so that is why there is a need for booster dosage as well okay fine understood so with this let's look at the schedule so according to national immunization schedule as we already know it is 6 10 and 14 weeks but booster dose as of now is not included according to iap it is again 6 10 and 14 weeks with a booster dose at 16 to 18 months okay so in both the things we see that minimum age is 6 weeks minimum age is 6 weeks vaccine can be given only after 6 weeks okay now what about people who do not come at 6 weeks for vaccination who have forgotten their vaccination then what happens is we will divide them into age group okay if it is within 3 to 6 months they appear then we give our normal 3 dose plus 1 booster dose if it is within 6 to 12 months then what we do we give only 2 doses along with the booster dose okay then if it is within 12 to 15 months we give one dose followed by one booster dose if it is more than 15 months just one dose is enough and usually iap recommends to vaccinate only children below less than two years because they are the age group which is maximally affected and high mortality is seen if it is more than five years only high risk populations like people with asplenia people with immunodeficiency we have already read like a list of people who come under high risk category for those people one dose is recommended one single dose is recommended and in case if they are undergoing splenectomy this has to be given less than two weeks less than two weeks sorry two weeks before the splenectomy two weeks before the if they are undergoing splenectomy today then they will have to be vaccinated against it two weeks beforehand okay and gap between each dose gap between each dose is four weeks four weeks a minimum of four weeks gap has to be given between each dose and a gap of eight weeks eight weeks have to be given between the last vaccine and booster vaccine last vaccine and booster vaccine a gap of eight weeks have to be given so this was regarding the catch up vaccination next let's see what is the amount of protection it gives it has over 90 to 100 percent efficacy so a very good protective rate against invasive disease that is what is needed for us correct for one year after vaccination one year after vaccination and we also seen that the immunity wanes off fast but that is okay because most of them are under two years that is affected most of the population okay and what about the antibody titers around 1.5 micrograms per ml of antibody titer is needed to prevent the disease at the exposure point okay if it is more than one microgram per ml it can provide long-term protection okay and if it is more than five microgram per ml antibody titers then it impedes even the nasopharyngeal carriage it even prevents the nasopharyngeal carriage of the disease so what happens if this occurs this can even at this point of time it can even provide indirect protection to other unimmunized children because there won't be bacteria itself for it to spread because it prevents the nasopharyngeal carriage of the disease itself correct so finally what about the adverse effect following immunization there are only very few mild and local reactions such as pain injection site pain swelling redness etc okay uh, that's it fine thank you bye bye